but I'm excited for today's class. Hi. Um, we're going to get into something that is applicable to Samba, which is normally what I teach on, but this time it is going to be specifically just how to improvise, how to create interesting solos, which um, with a lot of the people that I teach, I feel there's a lot of fear of stepping in that water, that there's a lot of... Uh, they feel a lot of pressure to make the most amazing solo of their lives every time they get a chance to solo, which is not really how it should work. Um, you should, you know, it's a space to explore sound. It's a space to explore rhythm. Hello, hello, welcome. And uh, it's really, once you get over that initial fear of making noise by yourself in front of people, uh, I think it's a lot easier to just let go and play and express yourself. Um, but like most things, there are not necessarily rules, but guidelines to help make solos interesting and improvisation interesting to the people who are listening to it. And the more that uh, you get comfortable with these rules, you think of them less as rules and more just suggestions and ways, starting places. Um, like you're not going to come to the most amazing solo in the world the first time you pick up an instrument and just go to town. It's not going to happen. Um, you have to spend some time with your instrument, develop your technique, um, and eventually you get to the point where you can express yourself freely. So I'm going to pull up my first slide here because I am all about these slideshows right now. Um, improv rules. All right. So we're starting with the idea of developing language. Um, and when I teach my students, I talk about learning to solo is the same thing as learning to speak another language. If you've ever had to learn a second language or even the basics of one, you start with basic sounds, the sounds that you have to create with your mouth or maybe even a small child learning to speak. The first things they say are da, da, do, do, things like that. Really simple syllables don't necessarily mean anything, but it's important to learn how to make those sounds because with those sounds, you put together words mama, dada, baba, things like that. So on your instrument, you learn to make your basic sounds, whether you're playing a drum and you're getting the different tones, or you're playing a melodic or harmonic instrument, you're learning to play the different pitches. Um, you're slowly assembling sounds that you put together to make something a little bit more interesting. And while we can communicate with just words, point at something, water, without saying the whole sentence, I want water, you can kind of get across your meaning, but it gets old after a while trying to communicate with somebody that way. So after we learn words, we learn phrases. I want water. I need food. I want a hug, as we all probably do right now with coronavirus. We learn to make short little phrases out of these things. And on your instrument, um, that could be a rhythmic phrase. For example, like the virada idea in samba, ba 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 bu ba. I'd say that's like a word going on a phrase, you have a couple different rhythms put together, ba 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 ba, and then you got boom ba, a couple different things put together, you kind of get the meaning of something. And if you're learning another language, it's just short little phrases that you learn to conjugate, I will go to the store, I would like this, things like that. Once you get more comfortable with that, you start getting into complex sentences that with different phrasings of like, tomorrow I will go to the store, yesterday I had already been to the store, or uh, more complicated ideas that flow together um, and you can express yourself more thoroughly through these complex sentences. And then finally, once you get good at expressing yourself in sentences, you can create whole stories, whether it's a paragraph, a short story, a whole novel, you have the tools to express whatever you want to express. So, and by, by that point, hopefully you learn good grammar, you learn uh, good storytelling techniques, all those things. And those ideas pass on to soloing in the same idea where if, say, I'm just having a conversation with someone and I never stop talking and I never put a pause in the sentence and who knows, I'm talking about the sky, I'm talking about what I ate last night, blah, 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 blah. Eventually you're going to lose interest because there's no cadence to it. There's no pauses. I'm not stopping to take a breath. I'm talking about random things. But if I start to tell a story like, oh man, this morning I was out of bread and eggs and I wanted to go to the store. I got there. There was a line around the block to get in because we're practicing social distancing. So I tried to go to another same thing. And eventually an hour later, I ended up going to Sprouts. I got bread and eggs. So we had a story. There was conflict. There was resolution. And it's better than just a run on sentence. So these same ideas you apply to soloing. Um, I think most of us maybe at one time or another have heard someone going for a solo and it's just notes. 
da, da, da. and people start uh, to tune out after a while. I think there's a lot of beginner solos who just have so much to say and they don't pause to literally take a breath and continue on. So solos need to have direction, they need to have breath, they need to have pauses, and they need to go somewhere. Um, so we're gonna build that idea now, working on different rhythms and putting them together so you're actually saying something and ways to play with phrases um, that are a little bit more interesting because in reality, there's only so many notes and rhythms in the world. Um, most of them, until you get into some weird polyrhythmic mix meter stuff, there's only so many combinations of notes and rhythms to create. So it's all about how you cut and paste and turn and change and manipulate things that already exist um, in order to make something interesting. So I'm gonna go on to my next slide here. Ways of manipulating phrases. So I'm gonna pick uh, a phrase that I think we are all very familiar with, your basic boom, bap, boom, boom, bap, idea that basic hip hop beat, rock and roll beat, we all know this, we've heard it a million times. Boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat. That's our phrase that we're gonna manipulate um, by itself. It's all right, it's a cool groove, but it doesn't really do anything. Um, it kind of has one side and then the other. So step one to doing something interesting with this phrase is to break it into parts. Now, I think it's pretty easily divided into two parts. We've got our boom bap, and then we've got our boom boom bap. So, okay, there's two components that we can choose to manipulate. Um, something really, the step one we could do is just switch the places. Boom boom bap. Boom, bop, boom, boom, bop, boom, bop. Yeah, not too interesting, but it's something that you can do to it. You could also start somewhere else in the phrase. You'd start on beat two. Bop, boom, boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, boom, bop, boom. And it's just identifying and recognizing the different phrases that are the different ideas that are within this specific phrase. Um, so, We'll move on from that. So we've got our idea of the two phrases. You can switch them, you can turn them upside down, things like that. Um, another really simple thing you can do to manipulate it is just change the sounds. Okay, so if on one and three, uh, the sound is the low boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, let's just switch it. Bat, boom, that, that, boom, that, boom, that, that, boom. Or if you wanna get a little more creative, you could do something like that, Boom, that, boom, that, that, boom, that, boom, that. Any of those notes, it's still the same phrase. You can identify it as the same rhythmic idea, but you're just playing with it. You're just changing the sounds around. Doom, doom, cat, do, cat, doom, doom, cat, doom, cat. Really simple ideas. Obviously, this is not rocket scientist or science. I'm not trying to explain crazy modes or tones and things like that. These are just the simplest tools. Like everybody knows this beat. What can you do with it? How can you mess with it? So you can literally just take this at home and just, okay, I'm already doing that. Boom, boom, crat, boom, crat. Let's switch it around. Bra, boom, bra, boom, bra, bra, boom, bra, boom, bra, boom, bra, 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 boom, boom, bra, 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 boom. Don't need a drum. You can do it just with your voice. You can do it snapping, clapping. You can use your chest, whatever you wanna do. Okay, so that's changing the sounds, easy enough. Adding and removing notes. That, this is where we start to apply our own creativity to this. Um, let's see, Oop, we go way in the back. So I did a little example of this here, of just changing, literally changing the places of the claps and uh, the low note, simple enough. So if we take out a note or add a note, so here's an example of taking out the note. We're just taking out, instead of boom, boom, bat, we're just adding a little rest, boom, bop. And it re this actually really changes the feel, even though it's just taking one tiny note out. We're used to this, bop, boom, boom, bop, then boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, bop, boom, boom, gap, boom, gap, boom, gap. All of a sudden we have a two bar phrase and one of them is a little bit more syncopated than the other one just by taking out one note and then putting it after the original phrase. Boom, that, boom, that, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat, boom, that, boom, bat, boom, bat, boom, boom, bat. And all 
of a sudden our phrase is twice as long, potentially twice as interesting, and all we did was take out a note. Easy enough. Um, so let's see if we add a note. Uh, we are just going to add another high note at the end of it. So we have the original phrase, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, ba. Having two high notes in a row afterwards. Doom, cha, doom, doom, cha, cha, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha, cha, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha, cha. Now if we do that in a combination with the phrase that we just did, we do this one first and then that one. Then actually what we can do, let's do one after the other. Let's do the original phrase, then the take away a note phrase, then the original phrase, and then the out of note phrase. And then it's a four bar phrase just by literally taking away one note and then another place adding one note. So here's what all of that would sound like. Three, four, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha, doom, cha, doom, cha, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha. Doom, cha, doom, doom, cha, cha. Cool. Four bar phrase out of a one bar phrase by the tiniest amount of thing. And then you can, of course, always add more notes. You want to go doom, cha, doom, 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 cha, cha, doom, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha, cha. It doesn't just have to be one note. You can take out two notes. You can take out three notes. You could put in a whole big pause, which it creates, we'll get to the idea of creating and the breaking expectations. But if you want to have a big old pause, doom, cha, cha, boom, cha, doom, doom, cha, doom, cha, cha, boom, cha. It creates this idea of tension where you're waiting for something to happen and then it happens and it's exciting when you finally get there because you had a moment of break before that happened. Um, okay, so let's move on from adding and removing notes to embellishments. Embellishments can take a whole lot of different forms, and I just wrote up a little example of here of how that can work. Um, embellishments are just keeping the same basic framework, but adding some decoration to what's already there. So if, for those of you who maybe don't read music and that's totally fine, this phrase up here still within this exists, boom, gra, boom, boom, ba, but we're just adding a little embellishment around beat two and then on beat one. So instead of boom, chat, we're going boom, take a Doom, pick a that. And it's the same idea. We're accenting beat two like a big old backbeat, but there's just a little, little extra spice leading into it. A little take a Boom, boom, take a Doom, do go back. Doom, take a Doom, take a and the same thing with, as we already talked about, you can change the sounds around with the same idea and all of a sudden, boom, grat, boom, boom, grat, boom, da ga da, doom, do go da, doom, do go da, da, do go da, doom, da ga doom, da, do go doom. All of a sudden you have this infinite kind of playground that you can use and just start messing around with all the different sounds and you get all kinds of fun little phrases with it. So I'd recommend for you guys uh, watching at home, um, take this video and get to a section like this and then hit pause and see if you can come up with your own embellish embellishments. And the fun part is getting to make up all the syllables that you want to use uh, when you're speaking these things. Doom stagada, exactly. That you can use whatever you want, whether it's like doom cha, da da cha, doom cha ka cha, doom bruka da. Make up some fun words. Your neighbors will love you for it or your kids will get a good laugh out of you making all these weird noises in your house. <laughs> so that's the idea of, embell of embellishments where you're keeping the same basic idea, but you're just putting a little extra spice, a few notes in between the notes that are already there to give it a little extra spice. Um, cool. So let's, let's throw one more idea of embellishment on this because um, I think embellishment's pretty important. So looking at the second two beats here, um, I wrote in doom do go ba as an embellishment of boom, boom, ga. We're just literally adding one more, but you could add two more notes. Instead of boom, boom, ga, you go do go do go ga. And if you're playing it right hand, right hand up here, your rights are still doing that original doom, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha. Then you would just add in your left hand, do go do go cha, doom, doom, cha, doom, doom, cha. Doom, bagada, dugu, dugu, cha. So that's embellishments um, in a very simplified form. 
I hope that helps. So let's now we get into a few more interesting ideas. Uh, I mean, they're all interesting, but we get to start playing around even more is the double time and half time idea where if this is our pulse, we're going doom, chat, doom, doom, chat. If we double time that, doom, chat, doom, doom, chat, 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 let's go. Double time. Doom chat, doom doom chat, 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 doom. It's the exact same rhythm, but you're going twice as fast, and all of a sudden it has this excitement. You can't help but want to bounce a little bit to it, even though you're playing the same thing, just double tempo. So you can mess around with that of like doom chat, doom doom chat, doom chat, chicka doo goo chat, doo goo chat, doom chat. The, the number of combinations that you can do with this are almost endless. You can put them backwards. And then put all the ideas that we already talked about of embellishments, moving around notes, changing the sounds, and all of a sudden you have completely different phrasing. Doom, doom, And again, still based on the same tiny phrase, but you have an infinite number of variations that you can do. You can even switch the notes around, like put, uh, go back backwards instead of dun dun cha, go dun cha ga, where you're just flipping it backwards instead of dun gu cha. Oh no, did my stream go away? Cha ga dun. Hold on, I'm gonna see if this. Ah, wait, where did this go? Come back. I think I had a little bit of a break in wi-fi we back hopefully okay we reconnected excellent sorry for the break hopefully that didn't kick anybody off the stream all right so we're talking about uh flipping beats around so instead of dugu cha we can go cha dugu start on the back side of it and go forward with an eighth note and then the two sixteenth notes so doom cha cha dugu doom cha cha dugu doom cha cha dugu doom so it's like making a mirror image of what we've already done. Dugu cha becomes cha dugu. Dugu cha cha dugu du cha cha dugu dum. So we start with our original phrase. Dum cha dum dum cha dum cha dugu cha cha dugu cha dum dum. Literally doing a mirror idea. Dum cha dugu cha cha dum cha dugu cha um. Okay. So check out that phrase as a little mirror thing because it's very cool. Doom cha dugu cha cha dugu cha doom doom cha dugu cha cha dugu cha doom. Same phrase, just flip it on the other side of the mirror. Um, so from there, let's talk about half time. So half time is just going instead of double two times as fast, you go two times as slow. And it would look, this specific phrase would look like this. We're dealing with half notes. One, two, boom, boom, cha. This would be, if this is our quarter note. One, two, cha, boom, boom, cha, boom, cha. Then we go to normal tempo, cha, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha. Then we go to double time, boom, boom, cha. And just switching between half time, double time, and regular time, you create this whole different feel. Because most of us, for most of us, this is kind of a dancey rhythm. So if you're dancing to doom, cha. Boom, boom, jack. Then they suddenly doom, ba, do, go, da, do, da, do, go, da, do, da, do, go, da. Then regular doom, chick, 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 doom, doom, chat. 
it creates a whole different feel and you can create that in your solo. Say if you're playing over a group that's grooving here. And then you're soloing. It just completely breaks apart this idea of where you are in the rhythm and you break it down into what you want them to feel instead. So that's the idea of soloing is creating something that's not just look at how many notes I can play and it's so cool. It's like, okay, I'm going to make you feel something. I'm going to play something that's exciting. And then I'm going to play something that makes you sit back and kind of sit into it. And then something that brings you back into that moment of excitement. Yeah. And exactly. So the main key to all of this is when you're practicing it, make sure you practice to a metronome, especially when you're doing these double time, half time stuff. It's really easy to cheat and maybe not go as fast as double time should be or go as slow as half time should be. So if this is your metronome, making sure boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, do go chat, boom, chat, do go chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat. And the consistency is really important. If you're playing by yourself, it is important to keep your own time, but especially if you're playing with a band and they're holding some kind of time with you and then you're manipulating time around it, then you absolutely need to be right on it so that everybody else can keep time. And so you don't lose yourself as well. There's times I've gotten lost in a solo off of my own land and then I try to come back and I realize that maybe I sped up through one of these licks that I like to play and all of a sudden I'm not in the same place as the band. So metronome, practice with your metronome. There's tons of free apps for your phone um, that you can just put it on, throw on some headphones and do all these practices. All right, so last phrase I wanna throw in this particular group of learning is uh, to move the phrase over in time. Now, this might look a little more complicated written wise because there's a bunch of rests up there, but it is, if I don't count myself in, it literally is going boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat. The only difference is the place of the beat. The beat is here, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, Doom chat, doom doom chat, one doom chat, doom doom chat, doom chat, doom doom chat, and all of a sudden it feels like this completely different thing when you just shifted it over one beat, and all of a sudden everyone's minds get blown like, oh my god, he's playing the back beat on the on the ends, it's crazy. And this is where you need to make sure your band is actually cool with holding time; it doesn't get pulled to to where you are switching with the beat. So if you're coming from the regular pattern, boom chat. Boom, boom, chat, switch it over to the ends. Boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, switch, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom, chat, boom, boom, chat, boom. And it just creates this tension or like, oh my gosh, this isn't where I normally feel a backbeat, but it works there. And you can do it in the double time. You can do it in the half time. If we're dealing in the double time, boom, cat, do, do, cat, boom, cat, do, do, cat, do, cat, do, do, wow, this, boom, cat, do, do, cat, do, cat, do, do, cat, do, that, do, do, cat, do, cat, 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 do, do, cat. That one becomes this whole other syncopated thing just by moving it over a 16th note. So again, the exact same phrase, and then you can apply all the things we already did to this phrase and then move it over and it just becomes wild. So take some time and you can play with this at home and see how many different ideas you can come up with based on this really simple thing. All right, so we're gonna move now to our next slide. Do, 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 do creating tension and release. Yes. So I'm going to get rid of my clips up here because I didn't want to write all of these out. Cause this is more about feeling, um, and counting, but feeling than, uh, looking at written notes. So there's a couple different ways to create tension and it's really important just like in telling a story or watching a movie or creating a movie, something like that. You need there to be conflict and you need there to be resolution. Otherwise, everything being sunshine and roses all the time is very pretty and nice, but one, not reality, and two, it's boring. 
So you need something interesting to happen in order, so when you finally get to the happy ending, if that's the kind of thing that you want to create, then everybody is relieved when you finally get there. So in a solo, you can create rhythmic, harmonic, melodic tension, and then finally resolve it and everybody feels great. Awesome, thank you, Lee. Um, so let's talk about one easy way to do, to create rhythmic tension, um, and that is using cross patterns. So everything so far that we've been doing is right on the beat. Doom, cha, doom, doom, cha. There's no tension, there's no release. Yes, very true. Um, it's straight into it. So when we get into cross patterns, we're creating rhythms that cross over the beat. So say this is all groups in twos and fours. So something that will cross over it will come in an odd number of groupings, like in threes, fives, or sevens. So if we go with groups of eighth notes in threes, we're going one and two and three and four and for our eighth notes, then we put them in groups of threes. We go one, two, three, 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 one, ba. And it creates this tension because you're not lining up exactly with everybody's expectations of the beat. So without me clapping, I'll get it started and I'll take out the claps so you kind of feel what those groupings of threes feel like. Go one, two, three, four, ba da ba da da ba da da ba da 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 ba da ga doom. So when we finally arrive back on the beat, there's this I, this feeling of release because oh, the, I know where the beat is. This is where I normally like to step my foot. This is normally where I dance. The rhythm finally arrived in that place. Um, so let's try a little bit of a more complicated phrase um, that creates the same idea of uh, tension. Ba, boo, boo, doom, ba, boo, boo, doom. It's still based on the idea of three eighth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three. But the, uh, the rhythmic phrase is to do something a little more interesting. Ba, boo, boo, doom, one, boo, boo, doom, ba, boo, boo, doom, ba, boo, boo, doom. And you notice the first time it starts on the beat. Ba, boo, go, dum, ba, and then the second time it starts on the and. Ba, boo, go, dum, ba, boo, go, dum, ba, boo, go, dum, ba, boo, go, da, ba. And that's where that tension comes in of this phrase, okay, I got it on the beat, feels great. Oh no, we're starting on the off beat, that feels weird. Okay, we're back on the beat. And then where's one? Because it doesn't line up with one each time. If you go ba, bo, go, do, ba, bo, go, do, ba, bo, go, da, ba, bo, go, do, ba, bo, go, do, ba, do. It doesn't loop the same number of times to get back to one as you would be like one and two and three and four and one. And if you really like want to nerd out about this stuff, the, uh, the North Indian counting system is some of the most advanced mathematical versions of this idea of cross rhythms that create tensions and talas and groups of threes that eventually resolve in a place finally after so much time. So if you really want to get into that stuff, look in like the North Indian uh, counting system. I know very tiny little bit about it, but the principles are the same. So resolving these things is where you get the release of those ten that tension. So with this particular phrase that we did, ba bugu do 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 ba. You finally get to one after four cycles. And if you want to get into the math and like four times three is 12 and that's how many times you have to cycle through. I don't want to get into all that right now, but the only idea is that you need to eventually resolve one of these phrases. Um, and for you as the musician playing it, the most important thing is just not to lose track of where you are. And it helps if you have your band holding the time behind you, you can always refer to them. It, you should always be internally counting and keeping track of where you are in reference to the beat. Or if you are a person who steps and plays, um, keeping track with your feet, doing like a right, left, left, right, one, two, three, four, one, you'll always know where one is at that point. So even if you break the cross and come out of it a little bit early, you need to just make sure you eventually land on one. So let's try to do it. We'll just do a two bar phrase of this bat bogodum and maybe change the end of it a little bit so we have a nice satisfying ending to land on one. So here we go. Bat bogodum, bat bogodum, bat bogodum, bat bogodum, bakarakadakarakadum.
Very final. Everybody knows exactly where one is. Baka raka daka raka one. That's one thing we all know how to land after a big crescendo. The bass drop. We all know how to end there. It creates this expectation. So something that would be maybe a little bit less obvious. Ba boogodum ba boogodum ba boogodum ba boogodum ba boogoduka doom, and it creates that moment of space before you hit there. And these are all options. This is where your creativity as a imp improviser and a soloer come in. Where if you want to have a moment before landing on one, create that space, and then you just drop it on one, that's really awesome. Or if you want to play a bunch of notes, ba boogodum ba boogodum ba boogodum ba boogodum ba that's cool too. You can play some kind of crazy phrase leading into it. But the idea is that you need to know where you are and eventually get there in a timely fashion and create the release to that tension. Otherwise, people are going to be left like, where's the beat? I've been hanging on this cross forever. I need resolution. Um, so make sure you give it to people. And so other ways you can create some ideas of tension and kind of resolve them in a similar way are is using syncopation. So just in the same way of most of us, especially Western musician or musicians, like things on the beat, doom, chat, doom, doom, chat. If you start playing stuff that is all off the beat, that tends to make people feel rhythmic tension as well. If we're grooving, you finally get back to the beat. If everyone's accenting ands or es and uhs or doing some combination of those things, it creates this feeling of, okay, we're all bouncing to where's the doom 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 bat and you can use that idea to finally land in some big fat beat of everybody together or land on a big break together and it is very satisfying for an audience to have that resolution after some some offbeat and you hear it a lot in um like reggae where you get the keys doing the little bubble do ding, 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 ding. and you get it in the playing the the iron in steel pan music do ki, do, 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 you get it in maraca too do, goom, do, goom, goom. then they get into the the heavy second and it's one of the biggest resolutions that you can get after all these offbeat 16th notes it's fantastic um okay so syncopation absolutely and this definitely applies to playing around in a lot of ideas of samba because syncopation is naturally built into the into the groove um so if say you're playing to like a tackle one, two, three, four. You can go into a string of offbeat 16th notes and then eventually resolve. And it creates this feeling of just like being dragged along almost. Boom. And as long as you come out of it in the right spot, especially with clave based music, where you have this idea of an onbeat side and an offbeat side, um, and you need to be able to resolve on the onbeat side, especially if you start something on the offbeat, cycle around and continue the offbeats through the onbeats and the offbeats, you need to eventually resolve it on the onbeat side. And that creates a much more satisfying ending. So, for example, in samba, the resolutions are on beat, typically on beat three. Or three, -da 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 stop. But really, two or three is a really strong downbeat sense in the samba idea. So if we're uh, hanging out in clave, I'm gonna go into an offbeat syncopation phrase and then resolve it on beat three. So you create this idea of tension, land on beat three, hopefully with the whole band. If you know people who've been playing these things for a long time, they can usually read each other, land on three together, and then restart the phrase together. So check that out one more time, because that's a pretty cool one. So, uh, 
this feeling of being dragged by those six teeth and I was okay where's the resolution where's the resolution bam on beat three then a little gap, gap, boom bing and we're back into it and that can apply to soloing on hepaniki can apply to soloing on pandero chimbao it works really great with dancers if you're soloing for a dancer um, if they get into some really fancy footwork or some fancy movements that uh, you can play some offbeat syncopated stuff and they'll follow it and eventually give them a little cue that you're going to end it and you land it together with them. They love it. It's absolutely fun on both sides as the dancer or the drummer to have somebody communicating with you that way. So if someone's getting into some contratempo in samba, and then they can land and then finally go into their straight samba. And it's satisfying for people watching, satisfying for you playing, everything else. <clears throat> all right, so after using syncopation, all the notes. I think this is what most people consider soloing when they first get into learning how to solo. Learning to play all the notes that whatever your instrument is, that, because <laughs> it is part of it. As instrumentalists, we like to show what we're capable of doing, and it's really always exciting for everybody when we get into the, the big, fast drum rolls. You're sweating, the hair's going. People love it. It's, it's part of the excitement of expressing yourself, depending on the context. If you're playing a more soothing, melodic, romantic idea or something that's meant to be a little more melancholic, of course, there's other ideas of this, but specifically with drums, when drums get to solo, it's an exciting, impactful moment. And so there are times where you just got to bring it and you got to put your hands down fast and you got to make some interesting phrases. Um, so typically, um, traditionally, all the notes either come at the beginning or the end of the solo. You can use them, all the notes, to introduce yourself, to make a big opening statement, to just be like, hey, I'm here, and then get into the more complicated rhythmic ideas. And then at the end, people love a big crescendo to some big finale. So then just letting it all out there to the end of something and then hitting a resolution. It's part of it. Um, the, it's the guitar wail. It's the saxophone screech. It's all the runs of notes. Um, definitely, yes. Um, and the, these roles do create tension as well because literally as a physical presentation, it's like how long can they keep up some crazy roll if you're running out in 30 second notes. It's like, how much can your hands take? Um, but there are ways to, that are that you can do it that are more interesting than others. It's one thing, if you're just going, it gets old. So what can you do to make those phrases more interesting? You can change the tones. You can stretch and compress the idea if you're hanging out in six tuplets. Then go to 30 seconds. Just you can change, you can compress. Um, what's really fun to do, especially if you're soloing on hand drums, is to create cross rhythms within your fast rolls. So typically, like on Chimbao, it's a really classic riff to go simple enough. But what if you do those in groupings of two instead of triple that triple that triple that triple that triple that triple that what if you go So you're creating this cross rhythm if the beat is here. That is a really satisfying resolution because you lose the accenting of the beat within that kind of a phrase. It's really easy. You know exactly where the time is. So that's a nice way to begin it and you create this expectation, okay, here's the beat, I'm playing these fast notes, then you break that expectation by accenting something that's not the beat, 
Bagada bagada bugudu bugudu bagada bugudu bagada bugudu bagadu tu bagadu tu bagadu tu bagadu tu bagadu tu pa pa brugudum. And then you finally get to the end of it, and it's like, ooh, that was fun. That was something different. And even if you're not playing all the notes, you can do something like bagada bagada bugudu bugudu ba bu ba bu ba boom broom. And the same idea of taking away um, a few notes to make it more interesting. Um, so. When it gets to all the notes, that just takes practice. And just when you're first starting on this stuff, make sure you, you're not just flailing on the drum. That it's like, okay, I'm going to play all the notes. Like, which of all the notes are you going to be playing? Because you can always subdivide 16th notes. Daga, 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 daga. You can subdivide six tuplets. Baga, da, baga, da, baga, da, baga, da. You can subdivide 32nd notes. Daga, 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 daga. And you can go on and on, um, divide those as literally as fast as you can play. But why to create tension? How by moving really fast? And then what are you still trying to say with it? You need to be leading to something. I've seen so many musicians try to do an all the notes section and then they kind of peter out by the end and don't really resolve it in a satisfying way. It's like, well, those were some cool notes, but I didn't really get the whole story you were trying to tell. So. I either want the say we're making a crazy char car chase and is it going to end with like an accident? Is it going to end with someone getting out of the car and bowing? How is it going to end? We need the ending of it is just as important as all the stuff that you play in between. So even if you have to like step back and play fewer notes to make a satisfying ending. So for example, Having this moment where you have a little bit of space right before you end creates a very satisfying resolution. It's kind of the the classic music uh, orchestral ba bo 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 boom. They'll have all these runs. Bo 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 boom. It's just the period on the end of the sentence, and that is just as important. Because if you don't put that there. How do you know it's over? You don't, except the music stops. Um, so with all the notes, you just need to make sure that you're coming up with a reasonable way to end it. It kind of works with the, uh, the same idea of resolving crosses where you need to f have an exit strategy. You get yourself into this moment of soloing and if you get in that moment, never forget where you're ending up, whether you're going to end on beat one, beat three, whatever that note happens to be. And so on line with that, the breaking of expectations is almost as fun as the creating of expectations. So if, if you've ever had this experience of hearing someone solo and they're coming to the big finish and instead of landing in the expected spot on one, they shift it over and put it somewhere else, it is both shocking and delightful and absolutely wonderful. Um, I tell a quick story that a friend of mine told of uh, someone who was studying North Indian music and they were doing the clapping and waving for someone who was playing tabla and um, clapping through this whole cycle, getting through it. And this master tabla player was playing and was building to the end. And it was like a fairly known phrase. And okay, here's the final tala. It's a group of three and we're going to land on one here. And she went to clap on the end of it. And he played intentionally after that part and it was so shocking that she fell out of her chair because there's this so much of a build up and tension to the point where it's going to land here and he intentionally shifted it and landed in a different spot and it was so breaking of the expectation that the poor woman actually fell out of her chair and that's awesome. I hope someday to play a solo that makes someone fall out of their chair. That would be great. Um, so that idea where if you think of the most simple idea of uh, building up tension and then release is kind of the in the club songs where you're having this bass build or the build right before the bass drop, right? <laughs> Something to that effect. Um, what if you don't land on one? Everybody in the whole room is ready and building and all of a sudden you land on one and it's not there. Like it's going to create a response, whatever that emotional response is going to be from the audience. And that is up to you as the performer, what response you would like them to have. Um, <clears throat> so a good way to go about it. Let's see. That's a good example of, say you're just doing a 16th note build, like a crescendo that would land on one. Boom. What if you go boom, put it in an eighth note later. 
and all of a sudden this expectation is broken people's ears perk up because they mentally already think oh they're just gonna land on one it's a build cool wait they edited somewhere else maybe they're not done yet so you could also do something like change to triplet and that's your resolution all the way on beat three and that's up to you as the performer of how you want to do it there's all kinds of interesting ways to make it happen um one is to always like if there's a lot of prescribed phrases especially in samba there's certain licks that everybody knows and you're just expected to be able to do and you should learn them and you should learn to do them correctly as they're historically done but then as modern performers it is our right and our job to tweak those and make them a little bit of our own so for example boom Okay, everybody plays that on Chimbao. How can I change the expectation? Okay, that's kind of cool. It still ends on one though. That's kind of cool. And then it shifts the, the idea of the break over. Um, and of course, you always have responsibility to your bandmates and if you have dancers, your dancers to not mess with them too much. Um, because you want the show must go on in all cases, uh, but you can mix with it just a little bit and it's always fun to do that. So that's kind of the overall idea of how we can do some interesting solo ideas. Um, and I hope that gave everyone an idea of how that all can work. And I would, for a little test, um, if you all want some homework to do, um, I'm going to give you a phrase and then I want you to come up with solo ideas and I want you to use all the ideas that we did in here uh, of isolate and manipulate the components, change the sounds, remove add notes, embellishments, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then if you feel so inclined, if you want to record yourself doing it and then send it uh, over to me, that would be super awesome. It'd be fun to uh, get a little compilation of everyone's versions of them doing it. And just know that there's no right or wrong in this situation. It's you expressing yourself and that's what it's all about. And as long as you're to the metronome, I would say like, if you're gonna do it, make sure you put on the metronome and then manipulate the phrase as much as you want to manipulate it. And it doesn't have to be long, maybe like a little 20 minute clip on whatever instrument you want to do or whether you want to do your voice, you can do body percussion, uh, playing on a table, playing on your dog. Uh, whatever you want to do, uh, that would be super cool. So the phrase that I would like us to do, let me think of a cool one. Let's see. You know what? Okay. So I was playing on a walk earlier. I was playing with soloing on my name. Uh, so this is another tool you can do. We're going to use the rhythm that I came up with for my full name. My full name is Amy Elizabeth Cadel. So Amy Elizabeth Cadel. Amy Elizabeth Cadel. So then rhythmically, ba 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 da ka da da da. Ba ka da da ka da da da. And I'll transcribe it out and post it here afterwards. So that is your homework. Take the rhythm of my name and play with it. Da ka da da ka da da da. Four. One E, a two E, and three and rest. One E, a two E, and three and rest. And then if you want to try this with your own name or with your pet's name or anything you want to do. Um, as I was walking today, I was messing with the idea of so fresh and so clean, clean from Outcast. So fresh and so clean, 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 clean. So fresh and so clean, clean. So fresh and so fresh and so fresh and so clean, clean. You can do this with any phrase that you want to do and just play around with just rearranging what's already there and get really creative with it. Um, I did a whole series with uh, some of my students about um, I like to eat apples and bananas. Okay, what can we do to that? I like to eat, I like to eat apples and bananas, apples and bananas. I like to eat, like to eat, like to eat, like to eat apples and bananas. You can do this with any phrase and you don't need an instrument. All you need is a little creativity. So pick a phrase from a song, pick your name, whatever you want to do, assign some rhythms to it and just manipulate it. And you can have a lot of fun with that. If you're in at home with family right now, you can play this game with your kids. You can play this uh, with your partners and just have them come up with a phrase, put it to a rhythm 
and you can pass it around. And 